On today's video, want to know what you're clapping for every Thursday at 8pm? I'll be explaining everything you need to know about the NHS. Also, how to make cool posters to thank all of its brilliant workers. And a reading of These Are The Hands by Michael Rosen. Today's video is about one of the most amazing things that we have in our lives. It looks after us from cradle to grave. It looks out for us and we would trust it with our lives. I'm talking about the NHS, the National Health Service. The NHS is amazing. It may have already saved your life without you even knowing it. Whether it's because you got immunised from a disease you wouldn't have even known that you might have caught without that vaccination, or whether it's because it delivered you safely from your mum's tummy all those years ago when you were born. It manages to deal with 463 patients every single minute. That's a million patients every three days. The NHS is the fifth largest employer in the world. It's globally revered and in the opening ceremony of the Olympics in 2012 held in London, there was a whole tribute to the NHS. But when did it come about? What does it do? And what does the future hold? The NHS was born out of the ideology that healthcare should be available for all, irrespective of wealth. And when you think about it, it seems balmy that that should ever not be the case. But there are some countries in which you can't access hospitals and you can't get proper healthcare and medicine unless you can pay for it. It seems so wrong and so sad, but brings home the fact that we are so lucky and privileged to have an NHS here in the UK. So when did the NHS come about? Calls for a unified health care service date back to the early 1900s and in 1909 when the minority report of the Royal Commission on the Poor Law was headed up by a lady called Beatrice Webb. The movement gathered momentum in the late 30s when a certain doctor, A.J. Cronin, wrote the novel The Citadel. The book highlighted the failures and inadequacies of healthcare. In 1942, Sir William Beveridge was commissioned to write the Beveridge Report, which was to address what social reforms were needed after the war. In it, he postulated the need for the National Health Service, free at point of access and paid for by taxation. The NHS is one of the most brilliant examples of one for all and all for one. We all pay money called taxes, which go into a big pot to the government, and then that in turn funds the National Health Service, which means that all of us can benefit if we fall ill or if we have an accident and we need to access our GP surgery or our local hospital. The project finally took hold when the Labour government of 1945, headed up by Clement Attlee, appointed Anirin Bevin, or Nye Bevin for short, as Health Minister, who embarked on the campaign to bring the NHS about that we know and love today. Before the NHS, those who needed to access medical treatment, care and medicine needed to pay for it. And that's still the case in many countries today, which means that those without money are discriminated against. There were those that opposed the NHS when the idea was brought forward, including, unbelievably, the Doctors' Medical Body and Union, the British Medical Association who opposed it. The NHS was launched on the 5th of July 1948, based on the three fundamental following principles. Number one, the services should help everyone. Number two, healthcare should be free. And number three, care would be provided based on need rather than ability to pay. It brought hospitals, doctors, nurses and dentists all together under one service. And it has changed a lot over its 70 years in existence. In 1951, financial difficulties meant charges were introduced for dentistry and optometry. Nye Bevin resigned, writing in his resignation letter, It is the beginning of the destruction of those social services in which Labour has taken a special pride and which were giving to Britain the moral leadership of the world. 
Over the years, there have been many changes, both advances and regressions. In 1952, one of the most important scientific breakthroughs of the century occurred when Crick and Watson discovered the molecular structure of DNA, which is the material that makes up genes in all of our body cells. The discovery helped revolutionise the NHS and healthcare and treatment all around the world, massively improving prevention and treatment of disease. Other advances in the 50s included establishing the link between lung cancer and smoking. Smoking was huge back in those days. Vaccinations for polio and diphtheria were found and vaccinations have continued to be a key and vital part of the work the NHS does to prevent the spread of disease. In fact, polio is on the cusp of being eradicated from planet Earth forever. It's very likely to happen in our lifetime and it will be the second disease which this has ever happened to after smallpox. From the 60s onwards, huge strides were made in transplants and operations. In the 70s, x-rays became possible so we could see inside our bodies and also the world's first test tube baby was born. There have been some amazing advances in healthcare, but there have also been regressions. Cutbacks over the years and budget decreases meant that in 2013, the NHS warned that it would be facing a £30 billion hole in its budget by 2020 unless radical action was taken. At the heart of its story is, of course, the impact the NHS has had on people's health. We now live 13 years longer than we did 70 years ago. Babies are way less likely to die. Many advances have also helped women's lives significantly, including breast cancer screening, birth control and so much more. And it's just as well as women make up 77% of the NHS workforce. We are so lucky to be without the NHS doesn't bear thinking about. Not only does it treat illness, but it promotes good health, such as with the immunisations. There's NHS Direct, which means that we can speak to someone on the phone who can help 24 hours a day. And there are walk-in centres 365 days a year that you can drop into for help and advice. So there we have it, a bit about how the NHS came into being. Fast forward now to 2020 and the NHS faces a bigger demand and strain than ever, what with the global coronavirus outbreak. The doctors and nurses and staff working in our hospitals for the NHS are the heroes of the day, saving lives by the minute. And so I thought it might be nice if we made a poster to put in maybe your bedroom window or in the window of your front room, anywhere that is facing outwards from where you live. Because all the NHS workers that go to work in the morning will see it as they walk past or drive past. Maybe you know someone that lives on your street that is working on the front line and it might brighten up their day to glimpse the offering that you've made for them. First up, you will need something to draw your post on. So you could use a bit of cardboard. I got this off a cardboard box, uh, a piece of paper. It could always be the back of something, um, like a letter, or you could use the back of a calendar or a desk calendar like what I've got here, because posters are better, bigger, especially if we're going to put them in the window. So anything that is a4, which is your regular standard sort of letter, like the letters you get home from school, size or bigger, will be ideal. I'm going to kick off um, using this piece of paper here, which I'm recycling. So to make a poster, it's really good to do things in big and bold. You want someone to be able to see it from street level and to be able to read it. So it might be fun to do some lettering either at the top or across the bottom and then a picture in the middle, which is quite a standard way to do a poster. You might have other ideas. It's completely up to you, but just think big and bold. So a really good way to do a poster writing, uh, to make sure that it's all even, is to get a ruler and then rule two lines uh, across your page. And that is what you are gonna use as your guide for your lettering size, so that you know your letters will all be even and go across the poster and be of a similar size. So 
once you've done that, it's going to be a lot easier to do your lettering. So I'm going to just show you. Go NHS is what I'm writing. And just to give you an example of how the letters will all fit within my lines. So I know that they're going to be uniform. You could even rule out the width of your letters so that you know that you're not going to go off the edge of the page. Um, which I, ah, I'm just about to, I've managed to just squeeze it on. Go NHS. So there you can see that mine has gone off the side of my page nearly. So you don't want to do that. Rule along. I'm just doing a quick slapdash one uh, just to show you. And then maybe again at the bottom, some more lettering. Uh, and then a picture in the middle. So I'm going to do some more smaller lettering at the bottom. Go NHS. And then I'm going to put We Heart You at the bottom there. And then hopefully anyone that sees it that works for the NHS will feel reinvigorated about going to work. Because it can't be a very fun thing to do going into work every day. Uh, when there's so many people that are ill at the moment. So I'm doing a we and then a heart. And then I'm doing the letter U. We love you. And then I'll do an exclamation mark as well. Okay, there we go. So there I have made sure that my letters are all in line with one another. And then I'm going to draw a big, bold picture in the middle. And I think I'm going to make it a thumbs up because that's a nice, big, bold picture. But I'm going to do a lot of examples to show you on my other pieces of paper and cardboard so that you can see lots of different examples of what you could do. There we go. So there's a thumbs up there. And then I'm going to draw a smiley face and a, a bunch of flowers with a thank you on it. Okay, so I'm now going to colour that in and show you it after I'm done. So I have finished my poster and there you can see it says go NHS in bold letters. We love you. And then I've put lifesavers, heroes, amazing, awesome, the best. And there's a bouquet of flowers saying thanks, a big thumbs up and a smiley face and lots of stars everywhere. Make your posters as eye catching as you can and make sure that everything is big and bold so that people can see it from street level. My two boys have done one each here. Number one son has written, thank you, NHS. And then he's put two with the colon, NHS. Love Covey, eight years old, which is very, very, very small in teeny weeny letters. This one says, thank you, love Huxley, age six. And there's a heart and it says NHS, yes. And there's a man holding the thumbs up. Oh yeah, three exclamation marks, let's go. So there we go, there's some great ideas there for posters that you can make out to the NHS. I should point out actually that my son has tried to copy the NHS logo here, which is a good idea. This is what the actual NHS logo looks like. So if you wanted to incorporate that into your poster, then go for it. Other fun things to put into your poster would be buzzwords like superheroes, superheroes, amazing, thank you. And also pictures that show how happy you are at the NHS and the work they do. Thumbs up, flowers, that sort of thing. Hearts, stars and so on. Here's an idea. You could take your poster out with you when you're clapping for the NHS in your street tonight to show neighbours, friends and family. 
Now then, to some more NHS facts and figures. Did you know the number of nurses has gone up three times since the NHS began in 1948? But that pales into insignificance when you compare it to the number of doctors. That has gone up tenfold since the NHS began. But not everything has been on the rise. The number of beds has gone down four times, from 480,000 beds back in the day to just 120,000 beds now. But it's not all due to cutbacks and budget decreases is actually because the NHS has improved so much over the years that people have to stay in hospital for less time. For instance, if you're having a baby, you're in and out much quicker than you used to be. And things like hip replacements take a matter of hours now, so you don't have to overnight at all. As well as employment, the NHS provided education and training for 38,000 nurses, scientists and therapists and over 50,000 doctors and dentists just last year alone. It's not all just domestic. The NHS is hugely important in maintaining global competitiveness in the UK's life sciences sector. It generates £64 billion annually and provides nearly quarter of a million jobs. The NHS is world class and known as an international leader. It has a strong track record of improving care quality and maintaining our global competitiveness. As well as providing comprehensive care to millions, it has been at the forefront of medical breakthroughs, for instance, pioneering the world's first combined heart, lung and liver transplant, and also the work it has done with CT scans. Those are just a couple of the examples. So now, a poetic tribute to the NHS. These are the hands by Michael Rosen. These are the hands that touch us first. Fill your head, find the pulse and make your bed. These are the hands that tap your back, test the skin, hold your arm, wheel the bin, change the bulb, fix the drip, pour the jug, replace your hip. These are the hands that fill the bath, mop the floor, flick the switch, soothe the saw, burn the swabs, Give us a jab, throw out the sharps, design the lab. And these are the hands that stop the leaks, empty the pan, wipe the pipes, carry the can, clamp the veins, make the cast, log the dose and touch us last. So when you go out in your street tonight to clap for the NHS, you now know just what it is you're clapping for. Be loud and be proud, because the NHS will continue to save lives, care for and look after us all, from cradle to grave. Lifesaver, caregiver, illness preventer, employer, trainer, researcher and educator, pioneer and groundbreaker. NHS, we salute you and we thank you. As long as we keep funding it and supporting it, the NHS will continue to go from strength to strength. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and spread the word.